do they just seem to come out really early and take a swing at you? Did you think your guys met that energy? Were you disappointed in your energy at the beginning? I just think they uh, physically uh, took it to us tonight. You know, the offensive rebounds early in the game set a tone. Um, you know, they got, got into us and didn't let us get into our offense. Um, you know, we hung in there. We had a good uh, good second quarter to keep the, the game close. And we liked, um, you know, the, the start of the, of the third, you know, getting Steph some space. And... Um, we just couldn't stay with them. They they dominated us physically. Um, th th I think they had about 18 more field goal attempts than us between the turnovers and the uh, and the offensive board. So they just it was total domination. They they um, they deserved it. They were they had a great game tonight. Um, Mike and his staff did a great job and um, give them the credit they deserve. How do you kind of, I guess, step back, view the the future of this team? You know, especially getting eliminated this early. Yeah, it's it's too early for me to even think about that. You know, um, you invest so much in in the season, and and um, there's so much that goes on. Um, it, it's so emotional. It's um, you know, the the highs and lows of this business are incredible. That's why. We're all kind of addicted to it. Uh, you can't find this um, anywhere else in, in life. I know I can't. Um, and you have to absorb the, the lows. Um, we've been really blessed here with amazing players and you know multiple championships and finals appearances and um, the highest of highs. And um, this is the flip side. This is life. This is how it works. You don't you know you don't get to stay on top forever. So um, what happens this summer and going into next year, we'll, we'll worry about that later. Um, right now, I'm just thinking about uh, our guys and um, how uh, committed they were this year, the connection they had, uh, the effort they put in uh, to put us in a position to at least have a chance. And um, we clearly weren't, weren't good enough, but not for a lack of effort or uh, commitment from our guys. They were great all year. Um, it's um, incredible when I think about, um, you know, I just you think about how difficult and physical this game was. And um, these guys have had, you know, our core group, six finals runs where, you know, you have 24 of these games, you know, in, in one playoff run. And uh, that's what I was thinking about down the, down the stretch of that game as it was clear we were losing, that, um, you know, Sacramento dominated. Um, but our guys have been fighting for so long. They're incredible uh, competitors and warriors, and I couldn't be prouder of them. Um, but, you know, we've got a, an off season where we've got a lot to, lot to think about for sure. Steve, um, two, two questions for you. One, what what do you think kind of kept Clay from really being able to get anything going on offense for him? Yeah, I thought they were really physical early uh, in the game, so his first few shots um, weren't great looks, and so I think he fell out of rhythm. Um, it can happen, you know, as a shooter, you you, um, you miss your first few, and and the game isn't um, coming as as easily. And um, I give them credit for their defense; they were they were really physical um, all night and um, made it tough on us. And then I guess following up with the physicality of Sacramento, a, a lot of the turnovers you know, and just their ball pressure on you guys, we talked a lot about needing to not turn the ball over heading into this. What, I guess, kind of caused you guys to cough up the ball so much and how did that change the momentum of this game? Yeah, the, fir the first half I think we had um, 10 turnovers, if I'm not mistaken, and, and um, did a better job in the second half. But, um, you know, some of it was um, just, uh, you know, some careless decisions. Some of it was there. Um, I mean, De'Aaron Fox uh, had a couple steals on the ball. Um, so the pressure on the ball uh, bothered us. And, and, um, and then I think, you know, later on in the game, um, you know, Steph was trying desperately to Get us back in it, and he so he was, uh, you know, making some um, some plays where he felt like he had to to try to make something happen, and you know we got a little bit out of our offense at that point. Steve over here on the side to your right. Um, following up on Kendra's question on Clay, how difficult was it for you to see him struggle like that, given everything he's meant to the organization, everything he kind of fought through this season to have a very good second half yeah. to see it end like that. Yeah. What was that like for you? It was tough. It was tough. I love Clay so much. I mean, what he's meant to me um, in the 10 years we've been together. Um, 
uh, I've, I've watched him the last couple of years, you know, fighting the, um, the feeling of devastation from the injuries. And I've watched him this year um, really flip his season around with his approach. And I saw him, you know, enjoy the, the second half of the season and play with a little more freedom, a little more joy. And so tonight was tough to... Um, you know, to see him struggle. Uh, but as I told the guys in there, that, you know, it's all, it's all part of being an athlete and being an NBA player. I mean, there's, uh, there's incredible highs and, and really tough lows. And this was a, a, a tough one uh, for Clay and, just, and for the whole team. You know, we just we didn't play very well, and, um, and it hurts. So it's all part of it. Uh, Coach, is it inevitable that you mentioned being sentimental that – I don't know how long you've started kind of feeling that way, but like kind of what were your thoughts uh, as you went into the locker room, knowing that the locker room may look a lot different or perhaps it could look the same? Just... Yeah, I mean, and, and it, it, it's that way anyway. Even if you're winning um, every year, you lose um, guys and bring new guys in. And, you know, the relationships that you build in this job are, are really special because you go through um, so many emotional highs and lows together and you form um, these powerful bonds that last a lifetime. It's what I love about team sports. I mean, you just, you know, my, my best friends in life are, you know, my, my former teammates who I played with. And uh, there's something incredibly powerful about, um, you know, the, these relationships. And you you just know that um, every year there's going to be changes. And um, it's, it's part of the business, but doesn't doesn't make it any easier. Steve, it felt like this game was much more like early in the season, the hump you got over, where it's like, they're throwing all this at Steph and you need somebody else. You've got a lot of guys who can score, but it feels like you just didn't know who was scoring that night. Just how difficult is that to run an offense when you don't know like which guy is going to be or maybe if two guys are having a bad night? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I've got to do a better job next year of um, – you know, helping us offensively, helping us find a little more rhythm. Um, I think we got a little too dependent on individual play this year. Um, last couple of years, really, we've, um, you know, we haven't had the same uh, rhythm and flow that we've had, um, you know, over the last decade. And uh, I think uh, my staff and I have to really um, look um, at everything we're doing and try to create a, a little more offensive flow to help our uh, our secondary players, um, you know, get get easier shots and 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 better rhythm. Uh, just everything that required the second half of the season, going 27 and 12 to kind of get to this point. Did you sense at all that that kind of took a toll, um, having to win so many games like that just to get here? No, I, I mean, I don't think that was why we lost tonight. I, th I think uh, we found a really good formula and a good groove in the second half. Um, to me, um, what this season is about is how many um, – great teams there are in the West. You know, for us to go, to win 46 games and be the 10th seed, that's uh, – you go back in the history of the league, um, 46 you, you, on average probably gets you the fifth seed. Um, we got a bunch of teams going for it, a bunch of teams who have loaded up, uh, really talented, really well coached. Um, so the West is um, just a bear this year. And, um, you know, you got New Orleans and Sacramento. One of them's going to be out of the playoffs on Friday. Both have had uh, great seasons. And, um, but you look at everybody above us, um, you know, Dallas, Denver, Clippers. Um, I know I'm missing several more. Um, you know, the, the, it's uh, Minnesota and, and OKC is the one seed. I mean, these are all great teams. And uh, I've never seen um, a conference so loaded. And that's why, like, I, I'm, I'm really proud of our guys and, and obviously disappointed in the end result. But I can't sit here and say, you know, man, what, you know, one play here, one play there. Um, this, is a, this was a tough season because everybody's good out there. How do, you, how do you kind of view your, your season coaching Chris and and how do you view his future or not yeah. future with you guys? Chris has been fantastic, not only on the court, but the leadership. Um, you know, he's it, it's a difficult situation for him that he handled beautifully. But, I mean, he's always been 
the starting point guard for his team. But you look at our team, man, we're pretty small, you know, and even though he's one of our best players, if we want to throw our best players out there, and he, you know, he's, he's one of them, you start, you know, adding up, you know, Chris, Steph, Clay, we're, we're you know, we're just, it's not the ideal roster for him. Um, but he was fantastic for us because he became our backup point guard. Um, as I've said many times, our our non-Steph minutes were uh, the best they've ever been um, because of Chris's leadership. Um, when anybody um, was injured and he played with Steph, it's fantastic. Um, but it's tough to, to, to survive. You saw it tonight. I mean, I think their size and physicality um, overwhelmed us. And um, so when you look at the... Um, the combinations that we have uh, out there, it usually kind of separates Steph and Chris and and Clay, and so there's not as as many minutes as Chris would like. But the way he handled it this year was incredibly so professional, um, such a great mentor for the younger guys. Um, one of the great pros I've ever been around. Just his approach and his attitude and his sacrifice. Um, uh, I love coaching Chris, and I I really. Hope we um, bring him back next year, and you know, like I said, there's a long off season. We've got to we got to see how it all plays out. Steve, the second quarter looked for a little while that Kaminga, Pajemski, and Moody were kind of holding you in this game. Uh, what does it's one game, but what does this under this kind of challenge tell you about those guys? What does it add to them, maybe going into the off season and next season? Yeah, I mean, I think all three had had uh, good seasons. Moses, um, you know, was in and out of the lineup, but but um, every time we called on him, including tonight, um, you know, he really played well. And um, I think both he and Jonathan, in their third years, have um, have really um, gotten better and and um, uh, blossomed. And uh, BP showed. Um, you know that he's he's for real as a rookie he was there's a reason we played him so much um he's a hell of a player um trace too trace had a tough night but a great experience for him to feel this and um so we got a lot of good young players and and that's uh, very promising um but we'll we'll worry about all that stuff you know later on if uh if mike dunleavy or someone else in the front office asked you you know if you believe that Steph, Clay, and Draymond are capable of making another championship run, what would you tell them? I would say I believe they can. I'll, uh, you know, these guys are all still really damn good players. So, um, hopefully, we we uh, can re-sign Clay. Uh, Draymond and Steph are both, um, you know, under contract. So we're gonna we're gonna roll it back next year. Clay is the question mark there, though. You mentioned that. I mean, how imperative do, do you view it? As to keep him around? Uh, we, we need Clay back. I mean, he's, um, you know, his, uh, I know he had a tough night tonight, but what he represents for us, the spacing, um, you know, we're not a deep shooting team. We're a little top heavy. And, um, you know, Clay's presence means so much to the, to the spacing on the floor, to the flow of the offense. And um, he's still got good, good years left. And um, and I know I speak for everybody in the organization. We want him back. Um, obviously, there's business uh, at hand, and that has to be addressed with Clay's representatives and you know Mike and Joe. And but what Clay has meant to this franchise, as good as he still is, um, we desperately want him back. All right, that's it for Thank you. Jermon, you're, you're laughing at the score sheet. What did you see from the score sheet on this game, and what do you think? Where do you think it went wrong? Uh, we lost 118 and 94. That's what I was laughing at. Uh, I think they were just more. They were more physical than us the whole game. Jermon, <clears throat> you guys aren't used to having your season end so so early. What are the emotions? As maybe you're either checking out of the game for the last time, you guys are walking off the court for the final time, seeing Clay turn back and kind of take in the scene. What are the emotions for you in those moments? Uh, just kind of upset. It's a loss. Um, you know, it's a fun group to come to work with every day, so kind of sucks that that comes to an end. But yeah, I don't really know. Do you? 
have confidence that you know it's a fun group to come work with every day. Do you have confidence that this group will still be the core group here next season? Uh, yeah, I have no reason not to. Um, you know, they stuck with us through the good and the bad. Not so great this year, but can't win every year. So, yeah, I do have confidence until it's no longer. How vocal will you be about the need to bring Clay back? I mean, he's that's kind of the, the biggest question lingering. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously we want Clay back. You know, it's... Uh, You know, we've been through a lot, uh, you know, incredible highs, some shitty lows. Um, but the common denominator through both of them is that we've gone through each and every scenario together, you know. So, um, <clears throat> you know, it's obvious that we want to continue what we've been doing, but you know, I understand he got a decision to make. Uh, he going to make the best decision for him. Um, team got a decision to make. Uh, they'll make the best decision for the team. But, you know, um, <clears throat> I have no doubt that even if, you know, which I don't think there's any scenario where Clay leaves and that's the best decision for this team and organization. Uh, but what I don't doubt is if, if Joe or Mike or anybody felt that it was best that this team moves forward without Clay. That wouldn't be the decision they make because they believe that. You know, um, they've shown nothing but respect, loyalty, um, love, trust to us. So I got no reason to go into it like, oh man, they're not going to do right by Clay. They did right by me. Uh, they've done right by Steph. They've done right by all of us. You know, Clay got Clay tore his ACL. Um, they paid him 160 million dollars. So I have no reason to think that our ownership group aren't going to take care of us the way we've taken care of this organization. Uh, like I said, ultimately that decision will be Clay's. <clears throat> but I don't look at it like, oh, man, they're going to only do what's – there's a lot of organizations that will only do what's best for the organization. This ain't one of them. Draymond, as soon as, even as you guys went through this up-and-down season – you get ready for this game. Before this game, when you look at Steph and Clay, how much belief is there from you about what you guys can do going into this game? I always got belief uh, coming into games like this, do or die situations. You know, um, each and every time uh, those guys come through. Uh, you know, Clay had a rough shooting night tonight, but he competed. Uh, you know, shots don't always fall. Uh, we got some, got him some great looks. They just didn't go in. Um, shots that he hit. Any other time, they just didn't fall. And so I always ride with those guys, man. They always uh, step up to the challenge. And it's no different than night shots just didn't go in. You guys are proud, and you guys have had a lot of accomplishments. How hard was it to take a game like this at this time? Uh, loss is a loss. I don't really look at it like, oh, man, this game and what happened, and we're done uh, this year. So it's just that. Dre, how would you categorize this season for you personally? Um, interesting, very interesting, but it was fun. Always enjoy playing basketball. Um, uh, like I said, going to war with those guys in that locker room each and every night was made anything that I went through personally worth it, uh, because I got to step back in there with the guys that had my back each and every day. Uh, so I never really look at it like from a personal standpoint, you know, I've had incredible years where I've been all-star, defensive player of the year, champion, all of that. It's never about what it, what it necessarily is for me personally, you know, so uh, I'm always one I take the good with the bad. Uh, you know, I don't, not a front runner. I don't only show up when it's good. I show up even more when it's bad, you know, and uh, through the through the ups and downs in this season, uh, any time, you know, it's time to show up and, you know, I and that's what I would do, you know. And I said uh, the, the bumps in the road along the way that sucked uh, made it a lot easier walking in the locker room and practice with those guys. So, uh, 
interesting nonetheless. I think I grew a lot. And, uh, you know, you take that growth, you channel it, find other ways to grow, get better, keep pushing forward. Uh, Draymond, um, those first couple games of the season that you guys played the uh, Kings, uh, we were you know, discussing that you had the Kings number at the time. And you were saying, well, you didn't think so, but it, it was just part of the learning process. Now they got one, and they get to move on. Do you have any uh, you know, parting ways, you know, at least for this season, uh, you know, how they've been playing? Because they did have some uh, bad losses, but they withstand that. And like I said, they got you tonight. Yeah, it's a good team. Uh, you know, I don't think any differently of them because they won than I thought before. Uh, you know, what they're capable of. It's a team that took us to seven last year and were able to pull out that series. Uh, but, you know, they're a team to be reckoned with. You know, not last year, not this year, but, you know, as this the years move forward, uh, they'll be right there. You know, great coaching staff. Uh, ownership group has done an incredible job. Fox is taking that next step. Uh, Sabonis, Keegan Murray continues to grow. Uh, HB being that solid vet for them. Uh, you know, they got a good thing going. And you said down the stretch wasn't ideal for them. Uh, to even be in this situation wasn't ideal. But you got to take the cards that you dealt uh, and play the hand. And so, you know, they, they're doing a good job of that. They came out victorious tonight. And it'll be interesting to watch and see their grow. Jermont, even when you guys were under 500, Steve always said that this was one of his favorite groups to coach, and he really loved coaching this group. And you alluded to how much you like playing with this group. Why do you think that is, even on a season where you guys didn't get to where you wanted to go, there was that enjoyment? And what is the lasting memory of this group, even you know, right at this point? Yeah, this team been through a lot, man. Um, you know, and through it all, nobody ever wavered. You know, you can appreciate a group like that. Um, chemistry on this team is great, you know, which always helps. Uh, and it was a fun group, you know, to show up with every single day. Uh, when the times were great, the group was great. When the times was bad, the group was great, you know. And so, um, yeah, you know, uh, what you take away from it is obviously it didn't end the way we wanted to end, but... It was fun going to work each and every day. Draymond, you guys had 46 wins. Normal years, you're somewhere near the middle of the conference. This year, you're in the play-in. Do you look at that and say, man, it's just a weird year? Or do you say, man, it's a lot of teams between us and getting back to the top? Uh, every year, there's 29 teams in between you and getting to the top. So I don't view this one as any different than that. But uh, I think I view that as the league has gotten better. You know, uh, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. And I think the league is improving. So I don't uh, necessarily view it as like next year, if we got 46 wins, it'll be more normal and you'll be in fourth seed or sixth seed. I don't think that's the case. Uh, I think the league has improved and it's going to continue to get better. So, like, you got to figure it out. You know, I think, you know, when we look at our season, we lost. I mean, we won 46 games. I can count on you right now. I can count six losses to you right off the top of my head that, like, we gave away, you know? And so I think the learning experience is the games that you're supposed to win, you have to win. And some of the games that you're not supposed to win, you got to pluck a few of those away too. And that's becoming more and more true in this league uh, with the parity. That, that there is in the NBA. And I think, um, <clears throat> you know, I try to pride myself on being a guy who understands the business of basketball, understand the rules. And I think you're, we're going to see more of that uh, with the new salary restrictions and tax levels and all those things. I think you're going to see more parity because of that. And so I don't think, um, I don't think that's going anywhere. I think that's going to be more and more that way rather than reverting back the opposite way. Thank you. Appreciate that. Your, your season with Chris, uh, what did you think of, you know, how he handled, uh, you know, the job he had to do and, and kind of his, I guess, unknown future with you guys? Uh, man, Chris was great. Um, I'm thankful and honored 
uh, happy as hell that I got the opportunity to play with him this year, uh, that we all got the opportunity to, to be teammates with Chris. Uh, it's not something in a million years, since I've said a million times, um, that we ever would have imagined. And, you know, other than winning, couldn't have gone any better. Uh, learned so much from him. Uh, built a relationship that will go beyond whether he's here next year or not, whether I'm here next year or not, uh, you know. And so, man, extremely thankful for C. Um, you know, there is there's not um, – I haven't come across many, if any, guys like that in this league, you know. And so it was just an honor to play with him. Um, as a teammate, I hope. You know, we get to continue doing what we do here in these uniforms. And, man, I, I hope and pray that he's back uh, and that I'm back because it's an honor having him as a teammate. The way he competes, uh, you know, you love going to war with guys like that. Brandon, how would you just contextualize uh, the, the the experience this season as a whole, everything you guys went through as a team? Yeah, it's um, very valuable for me and Trace just to see the highs, the lows, uh, what it takes over the course of 82 games to be a pro. Um, for me, I couldn't ask for anything more in, in a rookie year because if you just see the, the, either the all the good or all the bad, you don't get to see, you know, the even mix of what I got to see, and I think that's going to propel me for my second year. Um, but like I said, having the, the vets, the young guys around me, um, just support me, being able to play heavy minutes night in and night out on a you know, championship-level team is, is special for me and something I won't take for granted, but it's also something I'm going to use to build on in the future. Brandon, uh, when you guys kind of emptied the bench at the end of the game, you got four Hall of Famers, Steph, Draymond, Clay, and Chris on the bench there. What's maybe the most invaluable lesson you maybe can take away from those guys? Yeah, everything's just about perspective. I think each of them have, you know, shared their portion with me and with Trace. Um, but everything's about perspective, and nothing is ever as good or as bad as it seems. And just taking things one day at a time and knowing that everything's not going to be good and everything's not going to be bad, as was showcased, you know, throughout our season. Um, but I would say the, the lessons and, and things that they taught me, you know, beyond basketball and how I could implement that into basketball, um, I, like I said, I think I'll use that going forward to, you know, make myself and make this team even better. <clears throat> Brandon, you said this was a, a championship level team. So assuming most of the pieces come back next year, what do you think you guys have to do differently? What has to happen for you guys to get to that championship level next season? Yeah, just, um, you know, stringing together those those quality performances. You know, I heard Draymond talk about it. There's about, you know, six, seven games where we had 20 plus point leads and we blew them away. And, you know, we win those six. We're not even in the play. And so um, it's just the, the the difference, like Steve said, the difference between the one and the 10 seed is, is very minute. And um, if we win those games, we're not even sitting here tonight. And those are the little things, the, the little details that I learned, you know, how much it does matter, whether it's game one, 82, 51. Um, each and every game truly does matter. Steph, you had a lot of time uh, uh, to have this one sink in, even while you were playing. Uh, just w what were your thoughts as this was happening, as you probably understood that the season was ending uh, and, and the way it did? What, what were you thinking? It's, you know, it's a horrible feeling. Um, 
when you go out there and compete, leave it all out there and it doesn't go your way, we obviously understand you can't win it every year, but there was so much belief that we could make something of this season uh, and, and keep our hopes alive, trying to get a win tonight and taking it from there. Sacramento played unbelievable tonight. They played aggressive and, you know, Keegan's making shots, the, the Fox is creating. Uh, it seemed like they got every 50-50 loose ball, offensive rebound. and. It was a, a tough way to end our year for sure because we've obviously been through so much all year. <clears throat> uh, this last two weeks, I mean two months, gave ourselves a chance to be in this situation where you, know, you win one game, win one game, then you're right where we expect to be, but we're going home. So uh, definitely frustrate, frustrating, disappointing to say the least. Uh, but you hold your head high knowing um, there's a lot more in the tank. And uh, for me personally, that's that's the mindset. After Clay has a performance as he does tonight, do you say anything to him, especially given that it's the last game of the season and he is entering unrestricted free agency? I know that everybody's going to try to connect that, but it's about the sense of pride and... Uh, I think just the committing him on a hell of a year. Everybody's going to talk about one game. And I know he wanted to play better. But, you know, we go through so much over 82 games and the fact that he was able to turn his season around with a new role and adjusting to coming off the bench for a long period and then, you know, back in the starting lineup and just really just having fun playing basketball and being at peace out there. I'm more worried about that um, because I know he's a true champion and we all, you know, again, prepare ourselves to play, you know, our best when the lights are, are bright and when it doesn't happen, nobody needs to tell you anything um, because all we want to do is win and numbers aside, like, that's the only thing that matters. Steph, it looks like tonight you had two and three guys following you, like they had a very specific game plan to take you away. Did it feel like that was kind of indicative of the year and trying to figure out how to attack these defenses and how to use that to benefit everybody else, so to speak? Does it feel like this was tougher than normal this year? Yes and no. I mean, uh, I think there's certain lineups <clears throat> that we have out there that – Teams are, you know, going to make other people either be ball handlers or, or shot creators. Um, but we obviously have counters to a lot of stuff. It's just tonight was the extreme version of that, where I know they remember what happened last year and uh, you know a lot of history with you know Mike B and and the way that he approaches the defensive end. So it wasn't a surprise that it was that aggressive and bodies everywhere. I think we had certain stretches of the game where we made them pay, but over the course of 48, you know, that strategy worked. So you tip your hat to them. Um, you know, I always find, try to find ways to still be aggressive and had a couple, you know, loose turnovers, but for the most part, they just took it to us the whole game, and there's really no other way around it. You said you can um, you can hold your head high knowing that there's a lot more in the tank. What gives you confidence that you and the core of you, Clay, and Draymond have a lot more in the tank? Uh, just knowing how we're built. I mean, we obviously understand the league has changed, and you know we're getting deeper into our careers, and we have to continue to evolve and. Um, you know, make the necessary adjustments to win games, but we put a, a lot of time into it. I think I work harder than I ever have at, you know, being pre prepared for a season and, and trying to, you know, perform at the level that I expect. And I know those two guys have been through it with me. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I just want to win. And I know um, that that's fully possible. You know, I know the summer's going to be uh, a lot of conversations and, you know, trying to set up ourselves to win and whatever that means. Um, I hope that's the outcome. 
What do you think about your season with Chris Paul and um, and I guess the, the, of your view on his future, either with you guys or not? I haven't played against him for you know so many years. Um, there's a lot said about our relationship when I was coming out of, of college and shadowing him for a summer or two and him showing me the ropes and then obviously the uh, playoff experiences that we've had playing against him. You don't, you, you know, I know, you know, him, his family, I know the way he approaches things, but when you see it on a day-to-day -day, through the course of the season, you see how passionate he is about the game of basketball, the conversations you have, the way that we kind of push each other. <clears throat> um, I had so much fun playing with him. You know, I, I know he's you know, year 19, um, and I don't know, you know how this thing will play out, but he is a guy that you love playing with because he brings it every single day. He gives everything he has to this game. Um, a guy that you kind of battle with, who puts the most time in. Like he's, a, you think you're at the gym early, he's always there. So it's kind of great to see somebody that loves the game as much as you do. Um, and I know. He's always going to find ways to try to be impactful, um, and you know, we'll see what happens over the course of the summer. But a team, you know, having him is is a better team because of the way he approaches everything. Steph, uh, following up on Kendra's question, um, Steve talked often about how much pressure Clay puts on himself, and he struggled the last few elimination games. Um, how how? Do you see him? How difficult is that when, when the, so the lights are brightest for him to put pressure on himself? How do you, as a friend and teammate, do you say anything to him? Or do you do you see that? Do you see him put that pressure on himself? Or I'm curious your thoughts on. No, I see him approach the game the right way, and it just you know hasn't worked out. You know, uh, has worked out for him individually with you know the the numbers and the way that he expects to play and that's that's okay it happens it's just sports it's unpredictable and um we've all been in that experience where you have amazing highs and he's had those and we've all had a uh, you know deep lows where you know you walk off the court and you're super hard on yourself because you know you wished it would have gone in a different way I don't know what else to say about it. It's just part of what we do and how hard it is of, you know, what we do over and over and how long we've been doing it. So the spotlight is bright and you have to accept, um, you know, the highs and lows of what we do, but not lose confidence in yourself. And I think Clay's been a walking model of that, you know, earlier in the year that people were talking about his play and he responded. So. It's a tough way to end the season, but I'm sure he'll be back strong. Steph, how how do you feel, I guess, physically? You've had to carry a heavy load, especially with some of the changes that's been going on, you know, on the floor in the last maybe quarter. Did you feel fatigued? Did you, did you feel the burden? I mean, you talked about Chris Paul being in year 19. You're what year, 15? How do you feel? It, I know I'm answering this question April 16th with no more games left, but I feel great. <laughs> uh, if we had to play Friday, I'd have been fine. If, you know, going to a playoff series, I'd have been fine. Like, I'm built for this, and I put so much time in. Um, and, like, there's no sympathy. Oh, you had this burden to carry and all that. That's what we get paid to do. And, um, you know, did everything in my power to – be available and perform at the level that I expect of myself. I don't care what anybody else has to say, and I think I'm gonna keep doing that. Uh, and just be with the perspective I'm blessed to play this game, and I still have fun playing this game. And again, I just want to win and be in the best situation to make that happen. So that's what I'm looking forward to in the future. Steph, you talked about the highs and the lows and all the emotions. What did you enjoy most about playing with this particular group of guys this season? Just how we've handled all the adversity of this year. Um, you know, it's been an emotional roller coaster, for sure. And you, you realize how much time you spend together. I think we talk about that every year. You know, this is nine, ten months of, of a grind. And from the time this group showed up to some voluntary mini camps in the summer, 
to you know training camp to all 82 games we played and again everything that we went through from some guys missing from time to time you know and losing a, a member of our family to you know looking up in the stands and trying to find a way to stay relevant down the stretch of the year like we we always kept our spirit and kept the juices flowing in the right direction and kept good energy and confidence in each other. And that's hard to do. Um, so I'm proud of that because there's plenty of excuses that you could have let go of the rope uh, a long time ago. And, you know, we had a really good, strong finish to the season. And still the 10 seed was weird, but you're in a position where you have, you have life and that's all you ask for. It just didn't work out. <laughs> Uh, just, I guess, big picture. Um, what do you feel like is, you know the young guys on this team can take away from this experience this season, and you know moving forward, um, how can their development help you know get you guys to where you want to go? We asked a lot of you know BP, Trace, and JK took another step, a big step in the right direction. So invaluable reps to understand how hard it is to win in this league and. Uh, you know, what it takes to be consistent every single night. So uh, hopefully they instill some confidence in themselves that they, you know, can contribute and will carry that momentum into the summer where, you know, they, they put the work in and, you know, whatever mixture of roster we have coming back, we're going to need some youth to come in and, and, and help us. and. Um, and then we found some gems for sure. So it's just a matter of continue to uh, make the necessary adjustments as a team to understand what's the 24, 25 Warriors going to look like and what's it going to take to win. Uh, I think they felt that all year and hopefully learned some valuable lessons. Uh, Steph, just Dream on and the coach just mentioned they want Clay come back next season. How confident are you that he will be back next season? I can never see myself, you know, not with those two guys. It's, I understand this league changes and there's so many things that go into it and we're not going to play forever, but, you know, we've uh, experienced so much together and at the end of the day, like, again, I know they want to win, I know I want to win, and that's all I worry, that's all I'm, uh, that's all I'm worried about. Well, I'm. I, it sounds like you think l little changes, little tweaks are, are reasonable, and you guys can win with that. And, it, and big changes aren't necessary. Uh, I mean, I have, I'm talking to Mike and Coach, and this league, you never know, man. Like it's 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 raw right now. Just sitting here, gonna be. Figuring out if I want to watch the playoffs or not uh, on April 16th. Like this is not familiar. This is unfamiliar territory. So even to answer that question is like I get. It. I just want to win, and whatever that means, I want to win. Oh, that it? Great. Thank you. Thank you.